Okay, I'm probably gonna start seeing stuff soon. I can't open it. Nobody's in there as far as I can tell. Always out of inventory space. That sums up your RPG life. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Security computer. Um, can I open this or is it locked because of the reader? I guess so. Oh, does it say Vladimir Bloom? Okay. You've been accepted into the prestigious ranks of our most hallowed organization. As such, you will join our noble cause and be privy to our most guarded secrets. The ceremony will take place the day after the next new moon, as is tradition. The Koskala brothers aren't just in the cult. They're its damn leaders. Uh, the Cult of the Tree welcomes you, Yako and Ilmo Koskela. No, it's been a while since we've seen a commercial. Day, then month. He uses European formatting. Bad day. This is a stupid house where something always breaks. I fix. I always fix. Old people do not respect me. I should ask for a raise. Is this supposed to be Ati, maybe? Hurrah! My acceptance letter has arrived. Oh, wait, no. It's the Vladimir guy. Uh, I'm one of the gang now. Do... Uh, do Svidania to the boring... Or is it Do? Do Svidania? To the boring old Vlad. Hello to the exciting new man about town, Vlad. I will buy vodka and herring to celebrate. This month everything will change. Uh, I had to take care of the dead raccoon over by the bunker. It smelled very bad. Not good for my hangover. Oh, you got a puppy. <clears throat> okay, May 5th, full moon, May 12th, third quarter, May 19th, new moon, May 27th, first quarter. June 3rd, full moon. I have a feeling I need to know what day it is that he got initiated. Mother's Day. Holidays. He had like all of June off, I guess. <clears throat> I'm going to write these dates down that are circled. I can get my notepad. There you go. So we got May. Four. 
and 17th. We have June 29th. July. Europeans get like a mandatory month off, don't they? That would be nice. Do they? I don't know. This is 17th and 20th of July. And in August. Seventeenth and thirty first. <clears throat> Coffee of the Year. <laughs> And what was the date of this? August 14th. Oh, I bet it's gonna have to, it's gonna be the code for the, uh, computer. I'm calling it now. Um, let's do the mind place thing first. Or left through the cafeteria door. Tor left the wellness center. Okay, the door's locked electronically. Maybe it's controlled remotely. I need to find some controls. They were running the cult. Confirmed cult member. Okay. Is that it? Okay, I guess it didn't do anything. Did I look at this? Yeah, it did. Okay. Needs a password. And a warrant, technically. Mm -hmm. But hey, desperate times. <clears throat> I'm gonna guess it's August 31st. No? Maybe 2023. Maybe it was a 17.
kind of windows too mumbo jumbo is that <laughs> <clears throat> Unlock the doors. Let's see the mail first. A riddle for your rifle. Okay. It's from an unknown sender. I'm a little doorknob that's out of place. It's all these clues and you can trace the way to your private space. I meet you at the greet inside a bright glassy cage where pretty flowers bloom. Is it outside? Why did you take the doorknob to my personal room? I'm sick of old people tricks. You bring it back so I can get my rifle. I'm supposed to go on deer hunt tomorrow. If you don't, I will hunt you instead. <laughs> oh my gosh, he sent that to the staff. And the residents. Um, Vladimir, I do not need to remind you that Tor and Odin would be ideal candidates for the cult. Please try harder to recruit them. There's Tor. Oh my god. And he's out of his mind. Need to get to him. And the doors are open. Yay! <laughs> Hercules. Oh my gosh, everyone used to quote that movie. I don't think I've ever seen it. But that part was on every fucking commercial. Oh, here's where the doorknob is missing. Is it in here? Yes, we have a lot of batteries. <clears throat> used to watch <clears throat> the Jerry Lewis one. I used to watch the the really old one. I don't know if that's Jerry Lewis. I don't know people's names. I do know who Eddie Murphy is. There it is. Uh, but the old one, I think it was a Disney movie. And it was called The Absent Minded Professor. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah. Okay, then. But yeah, that's the only one I've ever seen. I loved it. I love the part where he's flying around in his car and they're following the jocks around and he's like bouncing up and down on their hood <laughs> with his own car. What did that say? Oh, okay. I'll never know. No, I don't have any room for it. Oh god, there's a deer. <laughs> <laughs> Hi there, little friend. Okay, there's either one or two more. Gotta store some shit. Oh, it was called the Nutty Professor? Okay. Well, the one I would see was Absent Minded Professor. I know someone's gonna be around the corner. So let's put this back. Oops. <clears throat> this. <clears throat> so many damn bolts. Flares. Oh, the examination room is open that we were hearing weird sounds coming from. for a fight. Uh, where is the flashlight? Let me close this. I want to see if this lets me up Upgrade it now. Uh, I think so. <clears throat> Consecutive successful hits will significantly reduce the time between shots. Stand still and enter improved focus mode. Grants perfect accuracy. Pulls shots towards the enemy weak spots. Okay. Uh. Sure. Saga fired the rifle. Hit the taken again. Pulled back the bolt to reload. She fired again. Another hit. Faster. Again. Yet faster. Again. A strange lethal feedback loop forming. Speeding up. All right. Ilmo was nervous. His palms were clammy. He lowered his phone. Mulligan isn't picking up. Yako shook his head, pointed at his own phone. Same with Thornton. Ilmo didn't like it. No one was answering the phone at the workshop in Watery either. Something was up. It had to be the writer. Had to be. 
The Coscula brothers were crouching in the bushes across from the Elderwood Palace Lodge, its light shining in the night. They couldn't wait any longer. The brothers knew Saga was in Watery visiting her trailer. Going now was their only chance to do this without hurting her. Ilmo stood up and a crowd of deer masks looked his way. Okay, this is it. The rider is the target. Take him down and it's all over. Only shoot the Fed if you have to. This is our big moment. We watch in the night. The crowd murmured the chant back to him. Ilmo turned his face to the hotel. He could see Saga's partner in the window. Ilmo slapped his brother on the shoulder. The brothers donned their masks. The cult of the tree was ready. All right. <clears throat> Okay, looks like it had five bullets already in the inside the gun. What's this? Gale Barrows. Violent outburst resulting from rapid onset dementia. Should be restrained whenever possible until a dosage can be found that impedes his aggression. Scary. <clears throat> here in a second. Let me change my charms. <clears throat> you won't need this one for now. Let's save. Ouch. 
if I can go back and save. <laughs> I don't know if this guy will respawn. Gail Barrow stared at his chest x-ray. It was in his left lung. And it felt like a black hole. An opening to darkness. He felt like he was drowning. He coughed and coughed and coughed. So hard his whole body and soul felt twisted and mangled. Upside down and inside out. With every cough the black hole grew bigger. It felt good. It tore him up but it felt good. Gail was dying. The black hole was sucking everything good out of him. He imagined looking through it into the darkness. The black hole grinned. Gale couldn't escape its gravity. He worshipped it. Gale sacrificed to it in blood. All right. <clears throat> I have a feeling he's not going to respawn. <clears throat> and when we find another save uh, break room, we'll probably stop. Shit. Please tell me he didn't respawn. I guess not. Need to catch up with Tor. Maintenance in progress? Oh my god. Okay. This place is in shambles. The wellness center needs a wellness center. What's this? Oh my gosh. Um, lost and found. Mittens homemade. A notebook full of daily meal plans. A nice fountain pen. An antique hair clip. Very pretty. Uh, address inquiry. Uh, address inquiries to your friend Rose. Oops. Um, I found a box of ammo for hunt for a hunting rifle in the cafeteria. Rose, I think you left some behind again. You really should be more careful. Take a tip from Vlad, a fellow weapon enthusiast. Always lock it up. Um, come collect it from me whenever you can. I bought that tea you said you liked. I can make you a cup if you want. Phoebe. He must have liked Rose. But Rose was infatuated with Alan Wake. Is it in here? Is this the cafeteria? Or that other place? There was like another cafeteria-like place, I think. Oh wait, but he said he took it and locked it up. Ooh, there's some pie. Why does everything look so delicious when it's obviously been sitting here for too long? <laughs> I want more commercials. What's this? This must have been Tor's. Oh! <laughs> Son of a bitch! <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, there's some bullets. And some health. Bullets. Bullets, 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 bullets. And Tabasco sauce. That's a lot of Tabasco sauce. Someone smoking in here with the food supplies? They have a refrigerator, but they have all the vegetables out here. That peanut butter. I think it is, but I can't read what it says. <laughs> it's got a, a little mariachi guy on the hot sauce. I wish I could get a closer look, but I can't. <clears throat> it's me, Tienda. <laughs> Hot sauce. I should have switched out my... Although, I, we're probably going to have another fight. <clears throat> it only had two bullets in it? I mean, I know where I am, but I guess they made me run out here. So does Rose understand what's happening? Odin loses an eye. <laughs> <clears throat> nice. <clears throat> I'm assuming we'll get a. Oh my gosh, there's blood. Um, the bolt cutters here somewhere. I think this is where we came out. I really like the flowers over here. They're so pretty. They're like hydrangeas or something. Purple. Not sure what that is.
There's a basement over here. Alright. It's flooded. And there's a body down here. Okay. feeling I'm not supposed to be down here yet. That's locked. That's just all of their gear. Oh, there's more. Okay. Ooh, spooky boilers. What's this? Remember, buy more fuses. Many more. Crappy old equipment keeps blowing them. Uh, I don't think I want to be operating electrical equipment while I'm knee deep in water. Okay. It looked like it was covered in smoke. Okay. Oh, it's berry! You bet it smells so bad. I hope that wasn't berry. Berry had a puffy vest. Redman. No, that's not Barry. I did say the next <laughs> break room we come to, we're gonna stop. Uh, there's probably gonna be something inside there. Ugh, I really need to equip that stupid charm. <laughs> probably would have picked up more than just one bullet. running out of room even in the box. I'm gonna have to start just throwing shit away. I don't know if I'm about to fight something big or not. Let's do it. Is it this one? around a little bit and then we'll stop there's like a thing over here there's probably multiple fuses it doesn't budge nothing doing I've also got a bunch of pages to read. Or have Alan read. <laughs> I 
Rose, spare fuse is now locked away because someone, Ati, keeps stealing them. Code is in the laundry room. Okay. Protect your belongings. So the laundry is down here? I wouldn't come down here to do the laundry. Can I open this for a shortcut? That's a real thing. Probably not. What is this? House of Zane. Renowned filmmaker. Establishes artist commune in Bright Falls. Thomas Zane, born Thomas Zane in Finland, and his partner Barbara. Jagger, born Baba Chakala in Finland, have recently established an artist commune here in Bright Falls. Mr. Zane has purchased the old manor house outside town and the couple has already settled in. In his home country and internationally as well. Uh, Mr. Zane is a well-known and respected uh, author auteur filmmaker, I don't know what that even means, a rising star already compared to the likes of Stanley Kubrick and Ingmar Bergman. I don't know who those people are either. <laughs> His earlier film, Nightless Night, won a number of European film awards. Mr. Zane currently uh, is currently in the process of filming a feature entitled Tom the Poet. In conversation, Mr. Zane comes across as cares as a charismatic figure with big dreams. He talks about building a hotel and a film studio in the area. He even has a name picked out for the hotel, Ocean View Hotel. This reporter believes the name has a nice ring to it. Mr. Zane's dreams would certainly make Bright Falls a household name if they became reality. Members of the commune clearly feel the same, seeing Zane as a person worth revering, even to a faintly cult-like degree, a person who guides his flock to expand their consciousness and reach a higher state of artistic inspiration with the aid of magic mushrooms. While the Bright Falls record does not condone the use of illegal drugs, we hope Mr. Zane will help put our town on the artistic map. I and we gotta get the this must be where the fuses are Cynthia Weaver had always kept her lantern close someone in the bathroom with her in the dark dark water pressed itself into her she uh. screamed <laughs> All right. Okay, the code is two seven three. If you see this, please remind the residents to leave my stuff alone. I think they hate me. <laughs> oh, 
What was it? 273? I didn't interact with this. Is this something they watch on movie night? That looks just like Casey. What the hell is going on? Just happened. Did I do that? Did I accidentally push space? <laughs> Never mind. I'll live with the stench for a 35 millimeter projector. <laughs> A fuse. I don't know how many we need. I don't even know where to put them. A fuse. Could come in handy. In here, maybe? No. Oh, uh, there's someone out there cackling and I don't like it. It's like you got too much fucking inventory. What is happening? Hold on. My controller's somewhere and it's fucking everything up. Alright. Um I guess we can just hold on to the batteries for now. The extra ones. want to save oh you know what we don't have it mapped or quick slotted where do we put the fuses I mean to do that. Does it go in here? I have no idea where it goes. Can't go in there.
I have no idea where this fuse goes. Need to find the key. Oh, shit. Maybe she's supposed to give me the key card to get in there. And I just like already went in there and did everything <laughs> before I knew that. Is there a save up here? Is this a, a break room? No. Oh, we can go inside here now though. Jukebox. Oh, there was someone over there. TV is on. Is there another commercial? No. I miss the commercials. I wonder if the break room upstairs is still available. It is! Alright, let's save. Or let's uh, listen to these pages and then probably be done for today. Oh, we got a bunch. Odin Anderson stirred in his bed, his vision hazy, smudged. He felt weighted down by an ocean of dark water. Through the haze, he made out Saga. Odin felt useless. He wished he could tell Saga how his silly faces made her smile when she was young. Too young to remember. Odin used to joke that Tor was her grandfather, but he was the all-father. He smiled at the memory. Odin was the kinder of the Anderson brothers. Tor lacked patience, more volatile. The brothers fought a lot, but they were inseparable. Now Tor was missing, dragged into darkness. Odin could feel it. Time was running out for both of them. Wheeler used to be the agent of a manic depressive celebrity writer, Alan Wake. Wake had various addictions on his back, an on-off death wish. Wheeler had seen a thing or two. Wheeler paid a lot of money for a good shrink. Got himself convinced that all the nightmares he'd seen leading up to Wake drowning himself were just his imagination. PTSD. Now we had pills to keep the shadows from his sleep. But the Andersons were something else. The nightmares were starting to creep in again. Or maybe it was the drugs in the air. Wheeler hoped it was the drugs. The Andersons were so old. Vampires. <laughs> After every gig in the party that followed, it took them weeks to bounce back. And they never did completely. Each time Wheeler expected them to croak. That's Barry there. Cynthia Weaver hated being old. She'd been a doer, a fighter. Now the bathroom frightened her, afraid she'd break her hip, like Norman. Cynthia had always kept her lantern close to hold the darkness at bay. Oh dear, my lantern. I think I've lost it, Cynthia said. This will put a smile back on your face, my dear, a voice said. A man's voice. Someone in the bathroom with her, in the dark. The light bulb had blown. She meant to replace it days ago. How could she forget? She had slipped getting out of the tub. She lay in the tub now. She lifted her hand. It looked wrong. Too many hands. In a black void with no sense of up or down, she was underwater. A dark shape pushed her down. 
Dark water pressed itself into her. She screamed. It came out of bubbles. Emmett Elwood had had enough. All his life, he'd been surrounded by the same small-minded, impolite, ignorant people in town. Their endless gossip, their nose-picking, chewing food with their mouths open, not washing their hands after visiting the restroom, touching things, touching everything. The world was going to hell. He'd watched day after day how all the nice things in life in Bright Falls were spoiled and ruined forever. There would be a just and terrible reckoning. Emmett had imagined many times how he'd make them pay. He had lovingly tended his anger, made it grow hotter. It was out in the open now. Ugly and slobbering, they reached at him with their unwashed hands. He would beat them down, beat them until they no longer moved. And then he'd wash his hands with a strong antibacterial disinfectant. <laughs> All right, last one. It's 1988, a face-off between deities on the rim of Cauldron Lake, high above its dark waters. Thunder roared, the old gods facing something even more powerful, something harder to define even. Or, changing the perspective, raving lunatics all, caught up in the frenzy of a shared delusion. The old gods, the corsairs of the Sea of Night, and the Dark One who yearned to stand in between, who had always stood in between, who would soon stand in between. We help you, you stay away from our family, Tor Anderson snarled over the thunder. Yes, until you all come to me, came the answer. That's never gonna happen, shouted Odin. I will take this as collateral, shall you remember our deal, said the Dark One. Blood arched from Odin's face as he fell to his knees. Lightning hit the dark figure on the cliff, and with that, he was gone. Tor rushed to his brother. Are you all right, bro? Effectively blind in that moment, the eye patch covering his left eye, his hand over the now empty socket of his right, blood oozing out of it. Odin cursed. The bastard took the wrong eye. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> 